and what's up everybody welcome back to the channel it is your boy chief ludes happy saturday i woke up feeling refreshed sort of this morning time to count down the top 10 cards for under 100k in nba 2k 22 my team now look the maxed out packs didn't really do as much for the value of some of these cards as i had anticipated but there are still some gems for under 100k that weren't under 100k before and i do want to talk about them so you know the drill let's get some honorable mentions out of the way first and then we'll uh we'll go from there number one magic johnson specifically the power within magic the reason i say that is because that magic can get chef and limitless spot up and some other shooting badges which are which are kind of important for magic they're not the most important for them i think i ended up putting uh I ended up putting Limitless and Chef on gold on mine, and I like him quite a bit. The reason he's not a real mention is on current gen, at least for sure, he's sluggish. I haven't really got a chance to mess around with him on next gen quite yet to see if he's still clunky in the same way. But uh, he's a six foot nine point guard. I also, you know what? I don't know if this is, comes from always using magic cards in 2K. And the reason I always do is because nobody likes his jump shot. So he's always like relatively cheap later in the year you know what i mean when we're getting like ben simmons and like other demigod fake point guards like magic's usually relatively cheap at that point um so or i should say affordable so i typically do use magic cards but i really really like his release this year i don't know what it is but i'm really wet with it i enjoy it it's not the fastest release in the world it's definitely not great off the dribble but i'm, I'm a big fan if you're looking for a six foot nine point guard that can post hook people you know, look no further. That's about the only guy that you can realistically pick up. Outside of Ben Simmons, you know, at least Magic Johnson can shoot. Like, at least. Next honorable mention is a card that uh, has definitely fallen from prominence due to more centers showing up. But Carl Anthony Towns is still good. Like, he's still decent. If you're looking for a floor spacing center with a big player build, like, Cat's still here. He's got a slow jump shot. That's about really the only issue with him, though. The one thing I'll say about Cat, though is just he's not a mention because there's better cards at the position he plays you know what i mean and we're going to talk about one of those cards now i can't say for certain this card is necessarily better than cat but i would i would say yes and that is pink diamond Kristaps. he's not a real mention just because uh he's been on this list like 16 weeks in a row he's like the uh gold digger of my team cards like he just never hops off the charts ever um, no, I should say, what's the what's that one song that literally Mr. Brightside never comes off the charts? I don't know what's going on there. It's just people love that song, man, especially the whites. Kristaps is good, man. I mean, you know what? He, I don't need to go into detail. He's seven foot three. Like we've all used Kristaps at this point. If you haven't, like it's not too late. Final honorable mention is a card that was my shooting guard for I would say a record breaking five days. <laughs> literally uh he started for i'm not kidding probably five days on my team and that's zach levine zach levine's really good it's just i got him and then i was like pretty stoked on him and then uh immediately scotty pippen came out so i just kind of was like yeah all right never mind he's done zach levine's good though six foot five you could say he's a little small but he looks closer to six 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 seven like he looks about the same size as like rj barrett just with a skinnier player model realistically um, he's one of the most lethal offensive cards in this game. The Zach Levine base is fantastic. Obviously, he can boom, he can shoot. Um, he's just altogether really, really solid. Only Gold Chef, but it really doesn't matter. He does have Hoff Limitless as well. He's not the greatest defender, but he can hold his own. Um, this is a very good card, and the reason he's on the honorable mention list is literally yesterday we had two for sure arguably three shooting guards that came out that were either just as good or slightly better for much cheaper than zach levine at 45k let's get on to the list number 10 galaxy opal clay thompson clay can still hold his own against the best shooting guards in this game no question lethal defensively a great jump shot he can move i would say the only thing about clay is he's really really expensive and he's, I wouldn't say he's necessarily on his way out as far as relevancy and usability. I think this year they've done a really good job of that. But I feel like a card with normal jump shot timing is definitely, I believe he has normal. Let me, let me double check on that because I'm not 100% sure. He might have jump shot timing on quick. I just don't remember. Um, it doesn't matter. His release is fire regardless. It is on quick. Okay. Um, his release is fire regardless. It really doesn't matter. Um, I think he was on 
Was this on quick from the get-go? I believe it was. That's why I think it's normal. Yeah. Okay. I mean, clay's still good, right? It's just for the amount that you can, like the amount you can get clay for, right? 100K. 99,950 if you want to get super technical for the signature version. You could, hypothetically speaking, get the best center in the game or one of the best centers in the game along with a shooting guard slash small forward that will literally be almost as good as clay you can get both of those for the same price as clay so that that's kind of where i was going with that number nine evan mobley evan mobley is good for sure he's a little bit overpriced i just don't think he's worth picking up for this price at this current moment because i feel like we're gonna get like a jonathan isaac or something in the near future so it's something to kind of consider probably at the opal tier um Evan Mobley's good, though. Uh, once again, just like Zach Levine, I legitimately think he played for my team for like four days. He's good. The limitless spot up on Hoff really doesn't come into effect. So the thing I will say about this, though, is like, yes, if you're somebody who runs a lot of plays, that limitless spot up will come into effect quite a bit. But if you play him at power forward and you run just like a typical Hawks freelance and then run some pin plays like that don't involve the power forward coming up to the top of the key, and it's not really going to come into effect very much. This is something I've said about power forwards having, uh, you know, limitless spot up the entire year. Realistically, the way most people play, um, it's not incredibly necessary for them to have limitless spot up because they're not really in that space or they don't really have that opportunity to shoot from that deep a lot of the time uh, at the power forward position specifically. Uh, that being said, obviously, you can tune it. <laughs> you can make that happen. You can make them be up there. I'm just saying for the average player, if you're just running a general Hawks or Bucks freelance, like they're probably not going to be up there too often. So it's just something to think about. I've been saying it all year. I just like to reiterate it. Don't overpay for a card with limitless spot up when chances are he's not even going to be in a position to shoot limitless spot up shots is what I'm getting at. That being said, uh, Evan Mobley is very good. And I'm sure a couple people are going to come in the comments and be like, that's stupid. That's not correct. Okay, well... I don't know what to tell you, man. I'm just I'm just trying to help. Number eight. A card that fell off in prominence so fast, but is still so very good. Jalen Rose. Jalen Rose is still really, really, really solid. Um, Cade, when he came out, like he just wiped the value of Jalen Rose completely off the earth, basically. Jalen Rose is still a top-tier point guard in this game. I'll, I'll say it. He's not as good as Luka. He's not as good as Cade, for sure. But I would say, I would argue he's still top five. For I would. I, I would say so. Jalen Rose is very, very good. You just kind of need to know what you're getting yourself into. He's not the greatest shooter, but he definitely can hold it down. Number seven, I'm, spoiler alert, you're going to see this guy featured on tomorrow's list as well. So, Pink Diamond Cam Reddish. He's so aggressively cheap at the moment that... I would be doing a disservice if he didn't make both lists, honestly. Is that a holographic Cam Reddish? Might have to cop that. Cam Reddish is fantastic, for sure. He's a Paul George clone, 6'8". He can play the two-guard, catch-and-shoot, pickpocket, clamps, interceptor. He's got 99 steel, by the way. Quick first step, menace, and ball stripper. The way I can describe Cam Reddish is he kind of reminds me of Gerald Wallace, but with a much better jump shot. Like, that's kind of what Cam Reddish has always kind of reminded me of. Realistically, he's got kind of the beefy player build like Jared Wallace, but he's got that Paul George jump shot on quick, which is fantastic. I mean, Cam Reddish is fantastic. If you're looking for a defensive-minded wing or two guard and you don't want to break the bank, Cam Reddish can hold it down. I would recommend getting Cam Reddish over Clay, personally. He's kind of the person I was hinting at you know, when I said that you could get the best center in the game or one of them and a two guard that could literally do as well as Clay. Cam and our number six guy, RJ Barrett, are the two guys I'm talking about. You literally can get either of these guys for 15K or under, which is absurd. Like, absolutely absurd. RJ Barrett's fantastic. Straight up. I like RJ Barrett a lot. He is, for all intents and purposes, a better version of Terry Dissinger. Like, that's what he is. Obviously, we're getting a new Terry Dissinger on Tuesday, so that's not going to be the case for much longer. But catch and shoot, hyperdrive, clamps, quick chain, interceptor, poster, as are downhill, handles for days, quick first step, clutch shooter, limitless, and menace. He does come standard also with, I believe, gold limitless, but no chef, which chef is kind of a necessity for RJ Barrett because he moves so well. 
controversial hot take i personally believe that rj barrett is actually superior to cam reddish but it really comes down to the fact are you looking for an offensive or defensive player it really doesn't matter these guys are both fantastic though number five come on you knew i wasn't going to go too long in this list without mentioning my boy scotty and not scott skiles scotty Pippen. There's a reason people were running him in the 250K tournament. This card is absolutely stupid. And you could get some really juiced up versions. I'm probably going to go shopping later and get one with a uh, unlimited contract. Do you hear Katana in the background? She wants to talk apparently into the mic. Yeah, hi, I see you. Look, Scotty Pippen is nasty. It, there, it is what it is. This one got an extra Hoff badge. What's the Hoff badge? I might pick this card up right now, depending on what it is. If it's Chef, it's going 100%. It's Space Creator, not picking it up. <laughs> Scotty's ridiculous. Most people aren't going to sell off their Scotty at this time, but if you could go in there and you could pick up a Scotty for relatively cheap, he's absolutely worth it. Like his jump shot is really clean, a little bit on the slower side, obviously, but I don't think it's as bad as it has been previously. Then again, I'm a Scotty Pippen stand. I literally run him every single year in 2K. It doesn't matter. I ran Invincible Scotty forever last year. I ran Point Guard Scotty in 2K20. Like it doesn't matter. I just like Scotty Pippen a lot. Some of the best defensive animations in the game. Huge player build can run your obviously point guard spot. And he has Scotty Pippen behind the back, which is so broken. The CPU literally can't handle it. it like glitches him out. Number four. Honestly, I thought this card was overrated. I really did. But Diamond Bull Bull. And I still, to a certain extent, do believe this card is overrated. Certainly. But every single team in the qualifier was running Bull Bull. So that has to mean something, I would assume. Um... <laughs> and having used him in a uh, draft mode, like he's good for sure. Is he worth 40k? I would say if you're looking for a power forward, yeah. Yeah, he's worth he's worth 40k. I mean, realistically, he's seven foot two, like he's Chris Stops, but he can dribble. Like that's basically what he is, essentially. So things aren't really changing too much. I mean, if you're somebody who likes Chris Stops, you're gonna like Bull Bull. Bull Bull just brings what Chris Stops brings with advanced ball handling that's basically it wouldn't run him at center because you're going to get abused but he's still worthwhile number two come on you knew i'm honestly kind of disappointed in myself for not putting my man higher but i have to be realistic and objective with these lists rudy is still an elite level wing in this game no question and the fact that you can get him for like under 50k is stupid i mean it's good but it's it's crazy the thing I will say, though, is he does need badge additions. Like, that's that's facts. Like, he does. Um, to be completely effective, like, you're going to have to give him Chef or Limitless or both, preferably. Uh, he actually works really, really well with Chef. I ran Pink Diamond Rudy with Chef forever, and it was fine. I had no Limitless on him. The Rudy Gay base, honestly, like, Limitless spot up really doesn't make a huge difference. Like, with no Limitless whatsoever... You can still crack whites from deep range with Rudy base this year. I mean, look at Terry Dissinger. Terry Dissinger didn't have limitless, but people would crack whites and greens from super deep all the time. It doesn't matter. Rudy base is fantastic. I would say the same thing with RJ Barrett. Still good. Number two. I mean, you could realistically flip these next two. Cade Cunningham. Like, you could. It doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? Cade is the best point guard on current gen and a very good point guard on next gen. You could argue he's the second best. You could argue he's like third or fourth. It really doesn't matter. Um, Cade is fire, obviously. Six foot eight, good release. I can't even remember the exact release he has now that I think about it. It's good. I just I don't remember what it is. Uh, let me take a look here because I truly don't remember. What What is the release he has? It's something like not crazy. It, it's good, though can't remember i'm trying to remember it right now and it won't of course 2k db doesn't want to pull up right now this would be the time actually to be honest i don't remember what set he came out in oh yeah here we go he's got jump shot 80 he's got the anthony edwards jamal murray release that's what it is on quick very very good i mean he comes with chef and limitless like he's good actually i don't know if he comes with those now that i think about it i think someone probably put those on there i think he's missing chef right now he comes standard with both of them Obviously, you can see I haven't had Cade before because I'm cheap and I don't want to spend this amount of MT. But if you're looking for an elite level point guard, like look no further than Cade Cunningham. And finally, I think you guys could probably guess who the final card is here. 
not David Johnson. <laughs> David Robinson. For sure, no question, it's D-Rob. Uh, D-Rob is one of, if not the best under in the game. You can make an argument for Ewing. I think Ewing is up there. Um, and he probably, he's the hot ticket item right now. But I think D-Rob is still the superior center. Uh, just for player build alone. That being said, I would rather use Ewing because Ewing never gets shine in 2K period. And I believe they gave Ewing like an updated release too, which obviously helps as well. Does he have jump shot four? He does have jump shot four. He's got the Booker release. Okay, I'll take that back. Ewing is definitely superior to D-Rob. D-Rob is the second best point guard in the game. Their point guard, center in the game. You can tell that I'm exhausted from dealing with these two cats. Either way, any of these cards, realistically, if you want to pick them up, they're going to improve your team dramatically. You guys are curious what lineup I'm running at this moment? It would be this, except I'm sorry, Terry Dissinger, you have been replaced. I apologize. It is not personal. RJ Barrett's out here. Uh, Hito might also be replaced. I'm going to make some uh, upgrades here. AK is going to be gone. I'm going to throw Bull Bull in there. But Dan Issel stays, bro. <laughs> like, Dan Issel stays on the squad. I'm cheap, though. I have like 600k MT, but I need it for pack opening. So, either way, I'll be back with the top 10 budget cards later, and I am going to be streaming later tonight. So, check me out. I might stream for a little bit on YouTube, a little bit on Twitch. Remains to be seen. But, uh, have a good night, you guys. Peace.